No, let me, let me change that. We need a savior. You see, he, he, he took care of the past by pardoning every sin and forgiveness of every transgression. He took care of all the stuff that we used to do. That stuff that we hadn't done so long ago that we forgot about. He, he took care of all of that. Oh, hallelujah. We ain't got to bring it up no more. That's taken care of. But the blessing is he didn't stop there. For some folk, that's good enough. Oh, he took care of what I used to be. But, you know, if, if, if it stopped right there, we would still be in a pickle because we still do some stuff that we need a Savior. And then he steps in right now and saves us again. He saved us from the penalty of sin, which is death. Right now, he saves us from the power of sin. Well, 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 what do you mean, preacher? You know, that stuff that we used to do that we real, really still want to do, that we tempted to do, but we don't do for whatever reason. That's because the Lord keeping you. That's because he took that desire that, 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 that you, you, you remember time when there's stuff you used to do, places you used to go, uh, things you used to hang out. Then one day you just decided that that wasn't important no more. You know, and, and, and I know young folks sitting there talking about, oh, well, you know, when, when you become a Christian, you, you, you just got to give up. Everybody always talking about what you can't do. Look, I'm going to tell you, I, I want you all to know and get this. There's some stuff that you're doing that you think that you will always do that one day you'll just wake up and it ain't important no more. There's some folk that you hang out with that, 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 that you think are important people in your lives that one day you're going to wake up and realize, you know, they ain't going nowhere. God called me better than that. God's got something else in store for me. There, there, there is a peace that comes when the Lord just turns your heart. Now, there's some folk who just don't get it. There's some folks who still want to walk after that stuff, but I guarantee you, if you let the Lord come in, he will turn your heart. He will deliver you. He speaks to us if we listen. You know, his, his, his voice is calling out to us. You know, that, you know that, that, as we, as, as, it just bothers me when I hear folks say, something told me. That's the voice of God through his Holy Spirit telling you there's something better. You ain't got to do that. You ain't got to go there. I was going to give him a piece of my mind, but something told me that was the Holy Ghost. <laughs> his heart beats in us. You know, you, the, the, those, those things that, 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 that you feel that you just have to do. And then we get frustrated because we're doing this stuff and it seems like don't nobody else want to do what I'm doing. It seems like I'm the only one doing it. Why am I doing this? And you keep on doing it anyhow. I had a classmate when I was in seminary, a guy by the name of John Mark. And it was fascinating. We, we went in, in, in intro to ministry. And, and, and what I found fascinating about this class, we're sitting there with all these preachers, and, and this was the class that, that really was designed for you to examine yourself, really to examine your call to ministry as to why you were doing this. And we had to write this paper, why are you doing this? And, you know, some folks, it, it was amazing to me. You know, some folk ain't called. It was some guys in the class, well, you know, I'm doing this because my daddy was a preacher. And I'm like, Whoa. Well, I'm doing this because, you know, somebody told me that I'd make a good preacher when, 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 when I got older. Or I'm doing this because someone said I was a good speaker. And, and I'm listening to all of these folks talk about why they were doing this thing. And it was fascinating to me because all I could remember is what I was trained up as a child. Some are called. Some are sent. Some just went. And the ones who went will come back. 
Because the thing I found fascinating as we were sitting there wrestling with this, there were two guys in the class. One of them, his daddy was a preacher. His brother's a preacher. He left preaching, said they dogged me out. They treated me bad. They just talked about my family and my wife couldn't take it. And I just left it alone. He said, but then I'm back here and I don't know why I'm here. And then this other fellow, this guy I was saying named John Mark, he spoke up and said, you know, I was at a church. They just treated me so bad. He said, I left. Then they ended up going back to another church. And they treated me bad and I left. He said, I'm getting ready to go to my third church. And he sat there with tears in his eyes saying, I don't know why I keep going back. He said, I don't know why I keep doing this. I don't know why I let, let these people just abuse me. And me and Reverend Curry was in the class. We were sitting in the back like, fire, shut up in your bones. You can't walk away from this. The Lord called you. You got to have a heart of God to do some of this stuff. Because I'm going to let you in on the secret. A lot of what we do Please hear me. Y'all get nothing else. Get this. A lot of what we do, if we doing it, you won't do it long. Because you won't be able to understand. Why is it that I give up my best and folk just act like they could care less? I'm the only one out here struggling. Don't nobody care. They don't even say thank you. They don't even acknowledge what I do. If I stop doing it, I wonder who's going to do it then. Please don't fall into that trap because if you stop doing it, God will raise somebody else up. Amen. Don't lose your blessing. Jesus has given us all that we need to do what he's called us to do. He's an all-sufficient Savior. Savior. 